the, the triptych back of that's who's there. It's only those two people, those two, those two persons, I should say, God, the Holy Spirit, and the bride of Christ, who is not everybody in Christ, who are saying, come. And by the way, who's, who are they inviting to come? Anybody who believes in Jesus? No, 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 no. Those who are hearing, the word is in the ongoing tense, hearing. Those who are ongoingly listening. Those who are thirsting, ongoing. Those who are ongoingly longing for truth. Those who are willing. Those who are, those who are also who are ongoingly desiring continuously. So you tell me. Is everybody, is everybody in Christ you know always continually ongoing listening to God's word? Are they also secondly ongoingly desiring more for truth? Are they also ongoingly willing to desire uh, uh, apply themselves continuously? Are they? Are they going to apply that desire? Are they doing these things? Don't, don't lie. We all know it's not true. I know I myself struggle with this. I'm not saying I do. I, I'm, I mean, I'm, myself, I, I, I find myself, I fall short of this. I don't always keep doing these things. That's why it baffles me to think I don't include, I don't include myself in saying I'm always listening ongoing. I'm always longing for truth. I'm always applying my desire, which is meaning I'm ongoingly hearing and thirsting and willing. That's what that's speaking to. I don't always have that in my mindset. There's some times where I get lazy, where I get overwhelmed, where I get sad, where I get just displaced, just, just despondent. I, I, I'm like that. But you're going to tell me that but I, when, I, when, I'm, when I'm on my focus, I am this way, but I have moments where I'm not, but I'm in focus. I'm on the, but you have people in Christ that are never this way. They're just content to say God loves me and God forgives me, and as long as I'm good to my wife and help my, help my kids have a good future and provide them a way to go to, go to college, I'm good to go. I go to church on Sunday, I pay my college tuition for my kids, I pay my bills for my, my family, I take care of my in-laws, I'm good to go. Okay, that's not a bad, it's a good thing that you're doing all that's great, but what about ongoing listening to God? Are you doing that? How are you doing that if you're not paying attention to spending time in God's Word? How are you ongoingly longing for truth if you're not ongoingly thirsting for more of God than His, than His Word? How are you doing that by doing those things that are all worldly in their view? There's no spiritual sense of that. And how are we applying ourselves with our desire continuously if by having our will? How are we willing? I, I don't understand that. I, how, where's your desire being exhibited? People always tell me things like, well, you know, I, I struggle with, with, with that because, you know, I, I, I have my wife and my kids and my work and then I... And I and I just you know I'm I'm, I'm just helping out these people that are homeless and I'm helping help these widows out and these orphans and, and that's that's what God wants from me. Okay, so God wants good works from me. Is what you're saying? It's what they think. Most people in church Christianity think that. Let's get real. We all do. Trust in Jesus. Go out and do good works. Go out and help help your fellow man. Am I saying that's wrong? No. I'm just saying that you're missing that middle step. You're missing the middle step. If you trust in Jesus and go right to helping out fellow man doing good works, you're missing the middle step, which is the how you do it and the when you do it and the why you do it needs to be on the basis of the second step, which is cultivate and develop your relationship with Jesus. Oh my goodness gracious, you need to do that with you, spending time with him alone. And what? And worshiping him. How? Study, pray, meditate, testify, and share that. Right? And pray, sing, sing about, sing about them. Praise, study, pray, testify, meditate, sing, praise them. That's how you cultivate and develop relationship with Jesus. People say, "Well, no, yeah, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. no." That's how you do it, man. No, show me where here it says you develop relationship with Jesus by fellowshipping with your fellow man and helping them out, and feeding the hungry, and helping the poor. You're supposed to do that. But if, you don't, if, you're not, if you're not doing that based on getting your gas tank fueled up by him and his word, then what are you drawing from? Your own intellect, your own heart, your own thoughts, your own disposition. And there, what's happening is you're focused on good works. You went from faith in Christ to good works, and you skipped over the relationship with Jesus. Just like Ephesus did step one and two and forgot to do the last part. 
That's the danger too, right? You could do trust in Jesus, get so involved in worshiping him and study and prayer and song and testifying of him, right? And meditating on him that you forget to actually act out in faith to help other people around you. I get that. It's kind of like Mary and Martha's thing. Yeah, yeah, she chose the more honorable thing to learn from Jesus. So there's always these different problems that we have in, in Christianity when you see what the challenge is. But I want to make sure we're not done with this book yet. But in, in chapter 22, verse 17, I want to make sure we're clear. The spirit and the bride says, come. I used to always just to read this as, okay, he's referring to, you know, right now. But no, if you go back to, again, in chapter, uh, in chapter 20, one in verse two he says the bride adorned for her husband and that's that's the bride there and then he mentions again uh in verse uh, nine i'll show you the bride the wife of the lamb he's showing the bride and when he says the bride he doesn't mean just the betrothed bride he means the consummated bride that's a day eight that's a dyke non marriage feast vision forward right so again in revelation 22 17 that's what he's bringing out here this is not just not just this is the bride which is why she's not spoken of earlier because she's not revealed until after the messianic reigns over with inspection day then they go from the ariston to the dike on the door shut now that's who that is and so when you see the spirit saying come now to all those from this dispensation past into now into day seven you have the bride post millennial reign post dike now beginning and they're asking people to come. They're saying, you can, you can come. Referring to what? Those enduring to A who can come into the city from the outer darkness. You can come. But remember, he tells you how they can enter in. So remember, going back to Revelation, we'll end with this thought. Revelation 21, 27. The verse of people are abominations. People, nothing common and that practices abomination and falsehood. And by any means, enter into the city. Unless they're in the land's book of life. Interesting. So he's telling you in the last book of life, those people who are on the outside looking in, they're out of darkness because of what they've done. Right? They have already set their set in stone. They can't change their disposition. You're not going to be able to inherit this city. But the only reason you're able to enter is because you're in the last book of life. And because now you're on the outside looking in, you have a full year to do what the bride's telling them to do. You better on going to listen to who? To the Jewish people that are over you. Ooh. That's what's happening. That's what you get. They're, they're trying to help you. So you better learn because those gates are opened up for each tribe to lead you in to give glory and honor to, to, to God. So listen to them. Be thirsting to learn more about what you didn't do right and do right because you both have been disinherited and you both entered in. But God's not using them to lead you to have your state of how you enter in. He's being nice to you. But the bride's telling you, you want to enter in. You have a whole year to think about this. I want you to hear. I want you to be thirsting. And I want you to be willing. Put forth your desire. Do all these things continuously. You can come in in the right way. So you do that. So, And that's what he's talking about. So we're going to go end this the last couple of verses. We'll go back and review and end this next Sunday. will be our conclusion, believe it or not, of the book of Revelation. Next Sunday. But this Friday will be Q&A. And then after that, we will then do the following. After that, we'll do some chapters. If I read Revelation one by one, going through all Q and A of every single chapter. Yes. Yeah. I think I have one more question about day seven. Now I'm, I'm confining to a group of people strictly that are born in day seven. They didn't come in as a hundredfold. None of that. Okay. If they are not full-blooded Jewish from the hundred forty-four thousand, what shot do they have if they're living at the end of the millennium? At, and succumb, you know, to keep from succumbing to Satan and not being part of the uh, sand of the sea. Do they have a shot if they are if they were born in the millennial reign and living when Satan comes forth, and they're not full-blooded Jewish? Do they have a shot at not being part of the sand of the sea? I think so. Yes. Uh, what would their shot be? I think their shot would be that they can have um, trust in. Sure, your question is. Make sure I understand correctly. Those who enter the millennial reign, who are of sin and death, born of sin and death, during the thousand years, at the end of that thousand years, those who are alive of this offspring are all of them going to be under Satan's deception, or will some have the ability to be given the graciousness from God to say, 
that no, I, I trust in God. I'm, I'm not following Satan. Even though they're not Jewish. Right, right, right. So, yeah. So, I, I, yes, I think that some will because just like I think that's true because of this thing. Here's why I think that's the all of them will be deceived. How do I know this? Because there's some of those Jews who are also of sin and death will be procured as the wife of God. So if those people of sin and death, of covenant, can come out of that thousand years, a cumulative number of them can be part of the wife of God, how could not be others well, would be they like kind? Would say proselytes? To correct. Okay. Correct. Okay, correct. so that would correct. be their way out because they would be proselytes. They're following the, correct. They're following the Aaronic priesthood, giving forth their sin sacrifice, yes. They're Even doing all those things. Even though they're not full-blooded Jewish, they correct. still can avoid the wild. And that's, and, that's, and that's why I think he says in verse 9, and those doing the words of this book, because that refers to other people. Because fellow servants and brethren speak to those who know mysteries. Prophets speak to the Old Testament folks. But then the others speak to those people that you just mentioned. Those who are just doing what is right, but they're not part of those other elks. There's not so other stations. Right. And unless they're prophets, I mean, there are all those that will succumb and be. Yeah, if you. See, correct. Yeah. If you don't, if you don't align yourself with the Iraq priesthood's re requirements to forgive your mm -hmm. sin during the millennial reign, that's who's going to be part of the deception of Satan. But those who align with that will not, would not be, because they, they align be, with. They can't be in Christ, but they can. Correct. They can't be. Correct. <laughs> They're proselytes to believing what God has put them there for, which is to be what they intended to be from the beginning, the theocracy to lead people to Him through them. So that's what they're they're filling what God promised them all along, to be the testimony, the light, to shines forth in this darkened world. That's what the Jewish people were supposed to be from day one. And now they're going to do that in the millennial reign. And so folks will actually come to God through them in the millennial reign. So those who do that will be procured not being part of that sea of the sand. But those who do not, those are the ones who are in that. Which is, looks like the masses. Looks like the majority will be deceived. Yeah, but, but there'll be a few that will not be. Not many. Not comparatively <laughs> speaking. And I think Todd's question, can we postpone? Yeah, I, I, I thought about that. I just meant because Q&A should be, yeah. You know what, but I think you're right about that because July 4th weekend is upon us and the 4th is Thursday, which means the 5th would be a weekend for people. So yeah, we'll, we'll do that. We'll postpone, we'll postpone, I can say this, we'll postpone Q&A to July 12th. And also after we're done with Revelation, I want you to think about this, because if we're done with this, we'll be doing Q&A July 12th, which will be then after our conclusion. So the next Sunday we'll meet will be next Sunday and we'll conclude Revelation chapter 22 and after that, we'll wrap this up. And then, after that, we'll go through each chapter asking any and all questions about chapter 1, chapter 2, and so on. We're going through this. We're going to ask any and all questions you want to ask through each chapter. We'll just keep going as we go. And so with that, and then that will end. After that, then the question is, what book do we go into next? What is the next study? So I'm going to put this out there for you to think about. Do you want to go into Romans? And then first second Corinthians, or do you want to go into first, second, and Timothy? Do you want to do that? So uh, I think that's what's on my heart. Or do you want to go to the Old Testament to something over there? So you guys can think about that, but that's out ahead um, for what's next for us to to talk about. You can decide. Um, do you want to go Romans in the first second Corinthians? Romans first, obviously, and then go through that. And then or do you want to go first, second Timothy? So that's where my, my thoughts were initially was on those two books, Romans and then Timothy, or do you want to go somewhere in the Old Testament? Either way, I'm fine with it. I just want to make sure that you guys have a voice, how God's leading you, where do you think we should be led, given how we're going to end this study, and then we're going to be going into, of course, in this fall, we've got our Bible conference coming up as well. So I'll be thinking about that. So let's close in prayer, and we'll end our, our time for today. So thank you, Father, for this time we have, this opportunity to always hear from you and learn your word, thank you so much for all you do to guide us and direct us in your truth. And thank you so much for just all you continue to reveal to us and to give to us in your love and your patience and help us to also patiently endure and remain under the, 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 the pressure of knowing what you've given to us is to bring out in us a goodness in us. So help us to remain under the patient endurance which is necessary for us to continue to move on, to walk with you and to be with you and to help, help us to see how you want us to have the best and, and in store, but yet it requires us to obey and to be uh, just resilient and have a positive mindset, always seeing your hand and will in it all, no matter how much it hurts us mentally, emotionally, and spiritually, physically. Help us to endure these things with your love, your truth, and your and, and faith that comes from you. We ask all this in Jesus, Yeshua's name we pray. Amen.